our opening hymn is hymn number 533. of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. During the, during the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we were supposed there was a one, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 67. We will recite the psalm in unison. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. A reading from the book of Revelations. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light or of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, 
and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. In my experience, life-changing experiences can, and 
I might be so bold as to say, will happen when we aren't looking for them. Many of the life-changing experiences that we have, no matter how insignificant they seem or no matter how huge they seem, happen when we aren't looking for them. Surprisingly, or unsurprisingly in my life, the greatest changes have happened when I wasn't expecting them. And I know I've probably alluded to this at least once before, you know, one of the most life-changing experiences to me as I was considering what it meant to be a priest and whether this was my calling, when I was in Hong Kong one day and I decided that I would go to a non-Navy worship service done by the local chaplain because there was an English-speaking church over in, in Hong Kong. And so I went all the way over, and lo and behold, that Sunday was the Sunday of the month that they didn't have service in English. They had service in Mandarin, and I don't speak Mandarin. And yet I stayed because it was, I felt called to stay, and it was a life-changing experience to me to worship with people simply because we were worshiping, simply because we were in a place called by God to be people of God. So what happens to us when we find what is not expected? When what we find is not what we expect? Or maybe a counter is better. What happens when what we find is what we expect? The answer, at least in my, and I would assume our realm, is important and something that can be both endearing or at least inviting to others. What we find or what others find in us is important for us as, our, as we grow or as we live and as others come to meet God in our place alongside us. Our tolerance for the unknown is something that we should try to understand. Just because we don't like the unknown, it's still nice to know how much we're willing to sacrifice to be with someone. Otherwise, when someone comes into our midst looking for something, we can either engage or repel them if we know how we're wired. We can be welcoming to people even if they're not exactly what we're looking for and even if we're not exactly what they're looking for. There are many questions that disturb me in this reading of Acts. And trust me, I enjoy reading, I enjoy finding questions when I read the Bible because that helps me become prepared for the unexpected things that happen in our life. And today's lesson from the Acts of the Apostles is no different. As the story unfolds today, we hear the story of Paul and Paul's faith. Paul has had a vision while he was in a vision from a man in Macedonia. And Paul and his followers were compelled to go and help. But I wonder, did Paul know what he was supposed to do when he got there? What does he expect when he gets to Macedonia? Does he expect bright lights? Does he expect something that is exactly as he imagined it? Or does it really matter to him whether he finds what he expects? And then we also hear the story of Lydia of Thyatira, who had gone from her home when we don't know, and she had set up her business in Philippi. She was a woman who was a purveyor of purple cloth, which is something which was very expensive in those days. And then later we hear that on the Sabbath, they both independently go to a place of prayer, looking for something. And their lives were changed by what happened to them in that place. I wonder what they expected to find in their independent journeys to that place of prayer. What were they looking for? 
Probably a place where God's presence was notable. But that's about the only thing I can be sure of. I wonder, did they find, did what they find meet their expectations? My guess is probably not, but it is implied in the story that they found what they needed to find. Just because it's not what you're looking for doesn't mean that it's not what you need. Thankfully, in this story, they were open to the movement of the Holy Spirit. And that would lead to an interaction that would lead them both and all of them, Lydia's family and Paul's disciples, to a deeper understanding of God at work in their lives and in the world around us. While the specific answers may be unnotable or at least lost to history, we can ponder these questions and what those life-changing meanings in our, what that might mean for the life-changing things that happen in our lives and in our ministry. Like Paul and Lydia, we are called to action. And God accepts whatever action we do in response to God's call, even if we make a mistake, even if we don't do it exactly like God intends for us to do it, doing something matters for God. Part of the mission that God gives us is to be bearers of God's grace and mercy for ourselves and for others. Because we should know or should expect that the ones who come to us searching for something about God may not expect us, me, you, and all of us, or may understand our mission in the world. And likewise, we need to be ready to pivot a little bit, keeping our eye on God and to morph into what God needs us to be in our context in that moment. Our ongoing challenge that I find today and the place for our reflection as we move into this coming week. We know that we will find people who come into our lives looking for a place of prayer. What can we do to help them find what they are looking for? We can listen to them. We can be ourselves. We can be welcoming. We can be alert to their presence and listen to what it is that they're truly looking for. And even if we can't figure it out, to sit with them and to be with them. And then when they come here, what they find in our place of worship or prayer help them understand how we see God and how God lives with us. We need to be open to the crea- to creating space where people can be touched by God, just like we all have been in this place. We need to open ourselves like Lydia and her friends to the ones who bear the image of Christ. Paul was an outsider in their world, and yet he came to them and touched them and help them understand the working of God in their lives in a way which was life-changing and revelatory. We can be like Lydia and her friends and set aside what we expect and embrace whatever it is that shows up. The question I have for you is, how do we take our faith on the road like Paul and his friends? We do that by being attentive to God's call by being willing to go with less than perfect information and by trusting that what we need is what we will find when we search in God's name. We need to live a life that trusts that God has more than we can imagine that is in store for us. God is waiting for us with more than we can ever, ever hope for. And yet we need to act and trust that God will be wherever we feel called by God. Just because it may not be exactly the place that God is calling us, wherever we go, God will be there with us. And God will lead us to wherever it is that we need to be so that we and the other who we meet will grow 
more like God. And lastly, we can't let our expectations of what might happen present us from being fully present wherever we are and wherever we find God calling us. God is waiting for us to seek and be, to be found and to be alive for others. Because it is in our acts of faith, our actions and our response to God and our calling, no matter how flawed they might seem to us, God can use whatever it is that we do to change the world for ourselves and for others. Where is God inviting you to open your eyes and open the eyes of others to the presence of God in the world today, tomorrow, and forever? Amen. Please stand as you are able and turning to page five in your order of worship. Let us recite the Nicene Creed, our ancient confession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people be found on page six in your order of worship. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name be, may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal in your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the way of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others 
and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember those on our prayer list. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering especially those at war in Russia and the Ukraine, O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of all our struggles for ju justice and truth to confront one another with hatred without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Slava Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Greet one another in the peace of Christ. Ascribe to the Lord the honor of his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to, the to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God thanks, thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. John and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. which is well-pleasing in his sight, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Our closing hymn is hymn number 510.